worked summers as a camp counselor in the northern parts of Ontario, Canada. On the date this particular incident occurred, I was camping with a group of 10 year old boys on the same lake the summer camp was based on. So like a routine camping trip, we canoe out to the site and set up our tents. Me and my co-counselor, whose name was Mike, would take turns supervising the kids while they swim, build forts and play games, etc. We cook some food over the fire, sit around and tell stories, cook s'mores, the typical Canadian camping experience. Around 9.30ish, I tell the kids it's time for bed, and they head into their tents, which were positioned a small walk away from the shoreline, but still in line of sight from where we had the fire pit. By this time, the kids have gone to bed, and me and Mike are shooting the shit by the water, smoking a cigarette, just basically hanging out before we decide to head into our tent and call it a night. What happened next still troubles me to this day, and remains my go-to scary campfire story. We were both gazing into the pitch black night water when we saw a small light approaching us slowly and slightly above water level. We speculated what it could possibly be for a few minutes before it came close enough for us to see that it was mounted on the front of a kayak and that someone was approaching our campsite. Now, it is important to know that as a camp counselor, part of our training goes over how to deal with strange encounters in an environment where we are responsible for a group of children on public property. I was prepared to give the mystery paddler the typical speech about how we are camping with a group from a recognized organization, and we would respectfully ask that they find another campsite. However, this person's appearance shook me to the bone as the light drew nearer. Paddling this kayak was a woman who looked to be in her 60s. She had incredibly long wisps of gray hair that was trailing in the water. Her skin looked like old leather, and her dead-looking eyes were tough to spot under all her wrinkles. She looked directly at me, and when she spoke, I realized she was missing most of her teeth. Are all of your children safe in bed? She asked me, pointing in the directions of the tents. Not really knowing how to respond and quite frankly shitting myself, I responded by telling her that they were fine, and she had to leave. That's good, just as expected for this time, she said with a smile. She then turned her kayak and paddled off into the night. At this point in time, myself and Mike were legitimately very creeped out not only by the appearance of this mystery woman who resembled a freaking corpse, but also her inquiry on the whereabouts and safety of the kids who we had brought on this trip. Not knowing what else to do, we grabbed our hunting knives and sat by the fire after checking on the kids. Half an hour later is where shit started to really get creepy. Across the lake, a female counselor was leading another trip for kids the same age group. She sent me a text which read something along the lines of, Hey Sean, stop screwing with us. This isn't funny, my kids are really creeped out. I instantly called her and let her know I had just seen someone near my campsite that seemed eerie and that I was not trying to play a joke. Apparently one of their kids had opened their tent door to take a piss and seen a woman with long hair standing with her arms open walking towards them near the shoreline. To my knowledge, this woman has never been arrested, so she may still be out there. This happened three weeks ago, and it still scares the living hell out of me. Me, my friends, and our girlfriends went on a camping trip to a place called Black Oak, a popular camping spot in Jefferson City, Tennessee. We were going out to swim and drink because it was our last week at school. We had just graduated and we were looking forward to our first weekend as college students. Me and my friend Thomas and our two girlfriends, Stephanie and Maggie, set up our camping spot at around 7 in the evening, and we went out to get the stuff. We returned around 8 or 9 o'clock. We smoked and swam in the lake and got the campfire going. We had a couple of drinks and me and Maggie settled into our tent after Thomas and Stephanie got into theirs. We were laying down cuddling when Maggie said, I think there's someone outside. She sounded scared. It's probably just Thomas or Stephanie grabbing another drink, I said, but I'll check for you. I went over to Thomas and told him to put his headlamp on and that we were going to check out the surrounding area for maybe 5 minutes. The search turned up nothing, so I went back into the tent and laid back down next to Maggie. The fire was still kindling, so there were still shadows around. I saw a shadow outside and I thought the same thing I thought before. When I heard Thomas speak from inside the tent and say, Jesus, that's the third drink you've had in an hour, I sat up and sat as still as a statue. I messaged Thomas and said, that wasn't me outside, bro. He quickly replied back with, what the hell? I heard you like 30 minutes ago and zip the tent and get out. My blood ran cold when I saw the shadow standing outside the door of the tent. I grabbed my pocket knife and held it at the ready. I looked over at Maggie who had woken up. I saw tears running down her face as she looked at me. I thought, holy shit, this is really happening. The shadow moved away from our tent and moved over to Thomas and Stephanie's tent. I heard Maggie sob and I heard movement again. 
This random person was stalking our campsite looking for god knows what. I laid back down and typed in a note on my phone. I typed out, be quiet, I don't think this person knows we know they're here. I showed it to Maggie and she nodded her head slowly. We laid there for god knows how long waiting for the movement of footsteps back into the surrounding woods. Suddenly, I heard Thomas yell, back away from the fucking tent. I unzipped the door to see a 40 something year old man looking absolutely bewildered. I pulled out my knife and said, you better leave before things get ugly. All this man did was give me the widest grin I've ever seen on a human face. Get out of here, I hear Maggie yell from the tent. His eyes darted to my girlfriend and I got defensive. In an instant, I stepped in front of the door, making sure he knew I meant business. His smile quickly faded when he saw the knives in mine and Thomas's hands. He looked at us both and ran off into the woods. Me and Thomas chased him down with our headlamps on. We followed back to the main parking lot of the public land. We saw a white beat up car drive off. We didn't get the plate numbers and it still makes me angry that we didn't. We packed up immediately, put the fire out and drove back to my house that was on the same road as the camping spot. When we got there, we had to realize what we just went through. It's been three weeks since then and I don't know if I'm ever going back to Black Oak. So if you do camp there, please be careful. I was camping in the middle of nowhere in Washington near Mount Rainer. It's not an official campground, just way out in the forest where I wouldn't have expected another human for miles. One night, I wake up and I hear something. I open my tent and there's a guy sitting by where my fire had been right outside my tent. Nothing particularly noteworthy about the guy, just a fairly regular looking dude just sitting there a couple feet from my tent. No bag or pack or anything with him, just a guy. He saw me open the tent, his eyes got huge like he had just seen a ghost and then he took off. It shook me up pretty badly, but over the next day, I managed to put it out of my mind fairly well after writing it off as just some odd occurrence and a guy that was probably high and had somehow managed to set up a camp coincidentally not far from mine. Two days after that, and 10 to 15 miles away in totally random directions where nobody could take the same path on accident, I was sitting by the fire that night and started hearing noises that I got more and more convinced were a person. I called out to them and out of the darkness someone asked, do you know how to get to Bell's Canyon? I replied, no, no I don't. I don't even think that's a real place there, I thought to myself. They kept talking from just out of my line of vision. I tried to see them with my flashlight, but they yelled, aim that away, and kind of spooked and not wanting to piss off a potentially crazy person, I did. After 15 minutes of me being very freaked out and them talking and asking completely random questions from the darkness, it sounded like the voice had gotten closer. I shined my light that way again, and it was the same dude who had been outside my tent two nights before. He had to have followed me almost 15 miles over two days because there is no way he could have just accidentally wound up in the same spot as vast as this wilderness is. As soon as my light hit him, he took off again. I started to chase him but didn't want to get lost in the wilderness in the dark, so stopped quickly after probably 100 feet. This one couldn't be written off because the only way he could have been in both places is if he followed me. I decided the trip was very over first thing in the morning and hiked back out over three days, constantly doubling back. I would occasionally hide behind some trees or bushes just to see if he was still following me. I can't really describe how terrifying it was to feel like I was being hunted through the woods and to actually have to brainstorm on things I could do to best avoid potentially being murdered. On the first night of hiking out, twice I heard what sounded like a person walking circles outside my tent, but by the time I mustered the courage to look, nobody was there. On the second night, I heard what I thought was an animal making noises at first in the distance, but slowly decided it sounded more like a human making animal calls. It could have been an animal, because I never saw that guy again, but the way the howling sounded, it sounded like a human howling. I almost cried when I finally got back to my car. The relief was so strong. To this day, this is the most terrifying experience I've ever had. I have no idea who the guy was or what his intentions were, and no way of getting an explanation but I really can't articulate just what a terrifying few days it was.